and uh, we have the great pleasure uh, to introduce a person that we have known, but we've approached more recently to collaborate with us. And he's an amazing person. His name is Mobin Rafiq, and I think one of the, I would say, good human beings in this world. He's the founder and chairman uh, of Commonwealth Interpr Entrepreneurs Club. Well, actually, he did that just because he said, we do, we're talking, be just because he wants to help alleviate poverty. He wants to alleviate um, lack of jobs. Uh, his middle name, he said, is SM what? <laughs> SMEs, that means, you know, uh, small and middle, middle sized uh, organizations. And, and he has been here before and he said he felt something then, but now we are so happy that he wants to say a few words about his club and also that we will try and work together uh, for the same aims. We, we are all, always doing that as much as we can, but with him we can do a lot more. Let's, let's welcome uh, Mr. Mobin Rafiq. Thank you, Robin. Uh, thank you, Margaret. It's really a great pleasure meeting you. Uh, this story, this story started a long time ago. And I remember uh, some Japanese couple invited me here many, many years ago. And uh, unfortunately, I was busy, but I, it was the first impression which really impressed me about UBF. Uh, and I thought that time that a day probably will come, I would definitely would like to join them and do something constructive. So basically, going back to Commonwealth, this is a long story which actually started probably when I started my career in 77 when I joined my father business industry and I remained with him for three years where I learned my basics of engineering industry while I was born into that family. My father started in 1948 the first engineering industry in Karachi in Pakistan. So I was born there and I saw them working 24 hours during my childhood. The main thing was that one thing really impressed me and made me worried is looking at some of these workers working in my father's factory. And the question used to be in my mind that it's such a small f salary, how do they make a living? And that question is still in my mind. So anyhow, to, to cut short, I joined him, I learned uh, how to work on each and every machine. We had the most modern engineering facility uh, where, we, where we were producing components and uh, doing reconditioning of engines. Uh, we had the largest crankshaft grinder, even till today, grinding 10 feet crankshafts. So having that sophisticated background, I visited first time UK in 1978 or 79 and then my father asked me to uh, buy a radiator manufacturing plant from UK. So basically my experience started in UK since 1980. And at the same time I started a very big industry and where we had 16 acre plot where in the first year I did around 275,000 square feet construction and I think I was 21 that time. So it was, it was really, it was really incredible. And during the first three, four years, uh, I probably bought around 2000 machines from UK. I used to visit London three times a month. And uh, there, that time there was no, uh, Tom Tom or anything like that. So I, I was young, so it was average driving every day was around 300 miles. But 
it was really diabolical kind of a situation where I saw Midland going down. And I just couldn't believe it that why they were selling their machinery for a song. And then on top of that, what really surprised me, and I discussed these very, very big people, and some of them really were vultures because they had no feelings. They just wanted to sell it off and make some money and leave. So my question was to them was that, you know, you, you build these facilities over a period of 100 years, and why? So they said, look, we want to get into service industry. I said, but you lose this technology. And all these redundant people, the best idea I can, I mean, I'm, I'm hopefully in few months time will launch my book. And I've mentioned in that book, this thing as well. So I asked them that, you know, why don't you send these redundant people along with machinery, which I'm buying for a song and uh, to different parts of the world, developing countries where you can continue with this technology. And, uh, but this area will be deprived with this technology what will happen in future? So that was something in 80s, I just couldn't believe it because of, from an engineering background. And I continued and that was a thing in my mind. And then we were in Commonwealth and I realized during that time that we were ignored. <laughs> and that was, that, was, that was a bad experience because UK was more, UK was more with Europe and so the entire Commonwealth, 54 countries, 53 countries, 52 countries were totally ignored. So I had that thing in my mind that time. So when Brexit started and all this, so I was just keeping quiet and I thought maybe this can turn out to be something good for UK because all these youngsters in this part of the world, there's, there's no vocational training centers in UK, the biggest mistake they made. And with Germany continued, you see, they, they continued with their polytechnics. And in UK, they closed down the polytechnics and they, start, and they merged them into universities. So you don't have a choice. So in Germany, anybody can go take three, four months training in particular, and then he starts making money. So it's all about, you know, jobs, jobs and jobs. So I, 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 I thought that this can be, and but during the last uh, four or five years, I had been visiting probably two, three hundred exhibitions, conferences, and there I saw, it was all talk. There was nobody wanted to talk something practical. You know, you need to, you need to, you, you really need to have some ideas. It's, it's cheap to talk, but end of the day, you got to give some solutions. So, so the point was this, this was my main concern because I was from, I mean, my, to me, my father was my teacher, a legend, whatever I am today, I am because of him. Amazing guy, philanthropist, technocrat. And, you know, I, I just, uh, if I start talking about him, believe me, it'll take a long time, but he was one person that I was too impressed and a great honorable person. And he taught me something when I came down to UK. He said, listen, whenever you buying machinery or anything, because my base was very strong, I knew about the business. And he said, always think, how do they used to produce this component 50 years ago? So if you keep it simple, that is what we need in our part of the world. And I think it was a great advice and I followed him and uh, because of my strong base, I knew exactly what I'm supposed to do. So going back uh, when this Brexit thing happened, I was so happy. And then I talked to my so many lords, friends, baronesses, and I convinced them that look, now is our time. And uh, I want to this Commonwealth thing, but this is going to be a private sector initiative. So I said, look, because what has been happening the last 40 years in Commonwealth is uh, each time after two, three years, the prime ministers, president, they come, they spend time, they hug each other, they kiss each other, they do shopping and then they'll go back <laughs> and, and nothing happens. So this is where I thought that what actually was needed was we needed private sector to sit in front of each other. And, and it is so easy. So if you make 
somebody from Nigeria to sit in front of a UK SMEs because that's what I believe in that UK has got such a great potential believe me so we want to help UK SMEs because during that time I had seen technology I had seen great people in Midland the only problem they had was they didn't have the finance or they didn't know how to go about it they didn't have the network so this is where I thought that here I am with thousand, near around thousand managing director, chairmen, that I know them personally. So having that kind of a network, and these guys are rich. I'm talking about some of my friends, they employ 80,000 people, 70,000, 60,000, $2 billion turnover, $3 billion turnover. So I realize one thing, what is it they want? Now their main problem is they are running an industry they're running an industry, they got to make sure that their machines keeps on running. So these guys want a market. Now, everybody wants to come to Europe, but they don't want to go to Africa. And that is where the future is. So I was, I was able to convince a lot of people. And there I realized that they said, well, you know, if I go to Africa, I'll have a problem because I don't know the people. And that's where I realized that if we could find, so what we are talking is finding good partners. So if I could f find good partners in Africa, end of the story. I already know a lot of people who are producing component, but their main fear is they don't know the other side of the story. So it's so simple and easy that, so Commonwealth Entrepreneur Club, main motto is very simple, trade, collaborate, finance, global SMEs, to elevate poverty, to create jobs. No politics, no nothing. That has been my objective. And I thought that uh, since I'm from the industry, I, I understand. So within this two years, during the COVID period, I was able to bring in 7,000 members during COVID. So this was, this was a major breakthrough and we feel that by June 22, uh, we'll have around 15,000 VIPs. So I'm not talking about 80% of the members we have are from industry. Now they're all desperate and that's the reason they immediately realize that we have a potential. So Commonwealth Entrepreneur Club luckily has become a brand now. And what we have done is we kept it very simple. There's no subscription, but it is by invitation and by nomination. And uh, uh, this is how we are doing it. We are, we are very successful. The government, uh, Patricia Scotland, been very kind, very happy. Uh, I've got friends like uh, Sir Hugo. So we've got, if you, if you get time, please visit my website. You'll be able to learn a lot from the website. It's called the ce.club. And uh, uh, I think... Uh, uh, I, I don't want to take you more time because I can continue on this topic. So I hope to hope to work with uh, with Robin and uh, with Margaret. We'll be meeting with each other to explore the possibilities because our end of the day, our main objective is peace can only be there once a poor man is not sleeping hungry. That's right. So, so, so I look, so I look forward with with Margaret and Robin to really look into it, and I hope to see you guys, hopefully again and again. And uh, I would also like you to please have a look at our website, learn more, and if you got any idea, let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you.